in the scientific community, there's an ever-increasing emphasis on looking at problems that are of increased complexity. That increased complexity can come from having additional phenomenon, needing to look at a broader range of scales, or changing the kind of question that you need to ask. The reliance on computation is increasing over time, and our goal is to facilitate that. That involves helping figure out what the right system of equations to look at are, understanding the properties of those equations, developing discretizations of those equations that are suitable for simulating on a computer, figuring out how to implement that on a computer, and analyzing the data that comes out of those simulations. So one of the nice things about Berkeley Lab is the ability to look across that entire spectrum for a single problem. We're charged by the Department of Energy to work with DOE facilities, and these particular include the synchrotron light sources. And there's one at LBL called the Advanced Light Source. A lot of the work that we've done in the past has been focused on simulating different phenomena. A recent new direction is looking at experimental data. We need new mathematics to be able to understand the relationship between what's actually measured and what scientists actually want to know. Camera has multiple projects at work. They range from tychography to fast tomographic reconstruction to image processing using convolution neural nets to ways to automate experiments to do inverse reconstructions in things like single particle imaging and fluctuation scattering. Um, the sort of the sky's the limit. One of the problems that we're having right now is analyzing vast amount of data. But the, the methods that TESS uh, uh, is, for instance, developing uh, might be able to, to give us some relief of, of this yeah, tsunami of data that comes at us. Yeah, so one thing that I work on is developing um, deep learning algorithms, which are a particular type of machine learning. So these are programs that you can think of that have sort of parameters that, that need to be fitted to data. But if you imbue a lot of context and prior knowledge into these algorithms, not, not too much so that it's restrictive, what you can do is that you can fit very accurate models um, with minimal training data, but yet apply it very quickly and very easily to a large, vast amount of data that are coming out of these, these new facilities. The key distinguishing factor of, of LBL is that it's, you're allowed to put together big teams. We face these really large, challenging problems. They're very difficult for a single investigator to pursue, but at LBL, we can assemble a team and draw together all the different kinds of expertise you need and use that to attack these big, outstanding challenge problems. The, the big question we're working on is how to make particle accelerators much smaller, much cheaper. The new uh, type of particle accelerators, that's called the plasma, they require a lot more computation. That's, uh, there's uh, very small beams that propagate in this very long structure. That means uh, a lot of what's called time step, you know, to compute the evolution. It's really key to revisit the algorithm, whether it's reusing some of the algorithm that now become uh, adapted again to the architecture that we have to work with now, or whether it's coming up with really new algorithm that are uh, the best for this type of new architectures. The study of mesoscale science is becoming one of the really interesting new areas. It's, just, it's fascinating to look at this and see all the new kinds of behaviors that come out and figure out how to solve those things computationally. These systems operate on um, a set of energy scales where thermal fluctuations play a large role. So we have to account for that by introducing some stochasticity into the dynamics we're evolving. And in this way, we can understand the impact of microscopic dynamics, fluctuations of proteins, if we're looking at some biological system on the larger scale dynamics of the system. Our role uh, is to develop, I guess, methodologies for dealing with the kind of issues that Katie just described. So for example, we're working on a code to simulate uh, electrolyte solutions. And in that case, we're treating the uh, water molecules as a continuum to which we add thermal fluctuations with a method known as fluctuating hydrodynamics. But we're treating the uh, ion species themselves as discrete particles. So this is an example of the kind of mixing of different scales. Berkeley Lab is an excellent place for someone to come at the beginning of their career. When they come to Berkeley Lab as a postdoc, they get to participate in this larger team science. And for many of them, it's, it's a real eye-opener 
and it's just a different way to do business that's very exciting. My favorite part is getting all these teams to actually work together. You know, the process of getting good applied mathematics to be relevant to a problem requires months. People talk with different languages, there are different cultures, there's different metrics of success involved, and watching them all focus together has really been a very rewarding part.